Are you ready to start tracking macros today so you can start making progress with fat loss immediately? Well, it's your lucky day because today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to get started with macro tracking in 10 minutes. The step-by-step -step process that I'm about to show you, it's super simple. Anyone honestly can follow it, even if you're a total beginner. And you know how I know this? Because I've seen this approach work with over 600 clients I've worked with in my past 12 years as a dietitian. So I know that it will get you the results if you follow it accordingly. So keep watching and let's get started with tracking. Hey everyone, it's Andres here with the complete crash course for getting started with tracking your macros. Now, it goes without saying that there's a lot that goes into a personalized nutrition and lifestyle plan to reach your goals. But when you're just getting started, you don't really need to overcomplicate things. The process of tracking your macros can be broken down into six steps that anyone can put into action to see progress. And that is exactly what I'm about to share in this video. I'm going to reveal my macro tracking quick start guide that anyone can use to go from no knowledge of tracking to confident and ready to see results. But first, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Andres Ayesta. I'm a registered dietitian who teaches busy professionals and parents how to lose weight using the science of sports nutrition and principles of habit change. Each week, I'm going to be putting out a new video with nutrition, mindset, lifestyle, and movement strategies to help you transform your body, improve your life performance, and crush your career goals. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel and don't don't forget to hit the bell to be notified when my next video goes live. Now let's dive into the basics of macro tracking. Macronutrients or macros are the three main nutrients that your body needs in large quantities. These are going to be protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Each one plays a vital role in your overall health and performance. For example, protein gives you the building blocks uh, for tissues, enzymes, and hormones, and even supports muscle growth and repair, which is what most people typically know it as. Good sources of protein include things such as chicken, fish, tofu, eggs, Greek yogurt, and cottage cheese, just to give you a few examples. Next, carbohydrates are your body's primary energy source. Sources of carbs include things like fruits and vegetables and grains and even legumes. And finally, fats, which are essential for so many body functions, including hormone balance, nutrient absorption, and even cell structure. Most of the time, you want to choose unsaturated fats from sources like avocados, nuts, and even olive oil. Each macronutrient gives your body energy in the form of calories. Proteins and carbohydrates give you four calories per gram and fats give you nine calories per gram. The process of tracking macros involves counting and balancing these three macronutrients to achieve your specific goals. Now, you're probably wondering why track macros in the first place. Well, by understanding the amounts of proteins, carbs, and fats your body needs, you can create a nutrition plan that is tailored to your unique needs. Whether you want to lose weight, gain muscle, or simply feel more energized, tracking macros gives you the impact information you need to take control of your health and your performance and ultimately gives you the flexibility so you can choose what you want to eat without restriction. I like to call macro tracking a nutrition awareness method. It's not about trying to restrict yourself. It's more like following a budget the way you would with your finances. For example, a budget, it really helps you avoid overspending and tracking macros helps you avoid over or under eating. Now, let's talk for a second about weight loss. If your goal is weight loss, you need to burn more calories calories each day than you consume from the food that you eat. This is called a calorie deficit. When you're on a deficit, your body will use its stored fat for energy and you'll actually lose the weight. Now, when you track macros, you determine how many calories you need to be eating each day. You break those calories down based on the three macronutrients that I just talked about and set targets for the amounts of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates that you should be eating daily. When you hit these targets, you'll be in a calorie deficit and it will result in weight loss. Now that you understand what macros are and why we track them, let's get started with the six steps of the tracking process. You ready? Step number one, download a tracking app. There are a number of different apps available, but the one I like to use with my clients, it's called Chronometer. My Fitness Pal and Lose It are other options you can try, but there's a ton of them. These apps allows you to input your macro goals and then they have a database of foods that you can use to track whatever you're eating in a specific day. Some of them also let you scan barcodes of the packaged foods that you're eating on a daily basis so you can track them quickly. Once you have the app on your phone, you can move on to step number two. Step number two, audit your nutrition. 
This is an important step and something that every time I go through with every single one of my clients, because before you start tracking to hit specific targets, you want to have a starting point with what you're currently doing. Many diets and things like that, or when somebody assigns macros to you, they just give you the numbers without really trying to understand what is it that you're doing right now. So what I want you to do for the next seven days is I want you to start using the app you downloaded to track what you're eating without changing anything. Start playing around with the app so you can understand the features and how to add your meals, how to add recipes, etc. The key thing here is for you to try not to change what you're eating to what you think you should be eating at this stage. But you also don't want to treat this week as your last week before the diet and have a huge overeating fest. Simply do what you always do. But this time, just keep a record of it. Step number three, Calculate your macros. Now that you've seen how much you're eating in a typical week, this gives us a really good starting point for making changes. So your next step is to calculate your macro targets. There are so many online calculators available that can help you estimate your macro goals for fat loss, but something that's important to understand is that any calculator or even working with a professional is going to give you an estimate. It's not a perfectly accurate amount because the amount of calories you burn changes every single day. However, when we make a close estimate, it will give you a good idea of what you need to be eating to be in a calorie deficit. For people who are looking to calculate their macros on their own without consulting with a dietitian, I recommend using the macro calculator from Precision Nutrition to get an estimate of your fat loss macros and your goals. You can find the link to the calculator in the description below. I'm not getting paid by them to actually say this. I truly like the calculator that they created. Step four, start adjusting your diet. So once you've calculated your macro goals, you can start by making changes to your diet to bring what you're currently eating more in line with your targets. Many people will find that they're either overeating when they compare their food audit to their goals. For these people, there are a few common changes that you need to be making. Number one, start to eat out less and cook maybe more at home. Restaurant foods often had a lot more higher calories than home cooked meals because they care more about the taste of the food than the actual nutritional value that they provide. Two, add protein to each meal. Most people aren't eating enough protein to optimize for fat loss and protein keeps you fuller longer, a tide is higher, so it's a little bit better for you to help you manage your calories. Number three, add vegetables to each meal. Most vegetables have lots of volume but fairly low amount of calories, so they'll help you feel full without overshooting your calorie goal, similarly to protein. Four, reduce your portion sizes of high fat foods. Fatty foods aren't necessarily bad, but they're very calorie dense. So many people overeat them without realizing. For example, if you're adding olive oil into your pan when you're cooking, if you're not really taking account how much you're actually using, you could be adding hundreds of calories going completely unnoticed. Five, use the rule of three at most meals. This means including a source of protein, a high fiber carb source, and some kind of colorful fruit or vegetables on your plate. And finally, it can be helpful for many people to buy a kitchen scale and weigh their foods at least at the beginning stages just to get a better understanding of portion sizes. If you don't want to do that, at least start to use utensils or measuring utensils like cups and tablespoons and teaspoons. As you make each of those changes, you're going to start to notice that your calories start to come more in line with your goals. On the other hand, if you're under eating in your food audit, start by making sure that you're being accurate with your tracking. Are you really tracking everything, even the little bites, the licks, and the taste that you have throughout the day. If you are and you're still under eating, try adding large portions of protein to your meals and maybe slightly increasing your portions of carbs and see how you feel. Step five, fine tune your tracking process. After you're getting comfortable with tracking, you can start to streamline this process. Something I like to do is I like to pre-track my days. So I'll create a plan in the morning for my meals and I try to input that in advance. People don't plan to fail, they fail to plan. This really allows me to know exactly what I need to do so I can hit my goals. You can also start by meal planning based on your macros. Maybe planning your meals for the week, in putting them to check calories and macros and building a grocery list based on the meals that you already know are in line with your macros right now. And one last thing, if you typically use measuring cups to measure your food, like I mentioned before, it can be helpful maybe to spend a few days using a kitchen scale instead just for more accuracy, just to see if there are any areas where there maybe you're over or underestimating your intake. Now, if you made it this far, you made it to the last step of this process, which is adjusting your macro goals. As I mentioned before, the macros that you get from a calculator are not always going to be the perfect amount of calories for your body and your goals.
goals. After a week or two of tracking, it's time to assess your progress. Are you hitting your macro goals? Are you feeling more energetic and focused? Has your weight actually changed? Based on your results, make small adjustments if needed. For example, you may want to increase your total calorie target or decrease it. Or you might want to increase your protein goal, which is especially helpful if you're feeling overly hungry. Okay, there you have it. This is everything you need to know about tracking macros in six easy steps. Now, the last thing I want to remind you is that flexibility is key. You do not have to stress about being perfect. Life happens and that is completely okay. Even if you go over your macros, that does not mean you're instantly going to gain weight. If you overeat slightly, that would just bring you a little bit closer to your maintenance calories, which is the point where the amount of calories burned is the same as the amount of calories you're eating. And if you do happen to significantly overeat, that is okay too. All you need to do is get back on track on your next day or your next meal. One day will not ruin your progress. So there you have it, guys. It's a crash course in macro tracking in just 10 minutes. Please feel free to leave any questions about macro tracking in the comments below and I'd love to answer all of them for you. Now if you haven't already make sure you hit the subscribe button because I'll be back next week with a new video to help you optimize your nutrition for fat loss. This is Coach Andres here signing off on my YouTube channel. See you then.